Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about computer ports. A computer port is a socket into which a peripheral device or a lead to a peripheral device can be plugged. A peripheral device being any device which plugs in from outside of the computer, not an internal device. These are all peripheral devices which could be plugged in via a port. Here's a photograph of the back of a typical desktop computer and you can see we have ports in all these places here. All different types and shapes. This is a photograph of the back of a tower, one of those that sits vertically on the floor or the desk and again you can see the ports here, different shaped ports, a lot of ports here and here at the bottom. That one's actually a network port or an ethernet port. If you've got a Macintosh laptop, the ports are usually situated on the side. Here's some of the Macintosh ports. And these are the ports on the back of a iMac, which is a Apple desktop PC. One of the oldest ports you find on a computer is a serial port. They're not usually used now, but at one stage every peripheral device used to plug in via a serial port. You recognise it because it has nine pins. And in the past, whether it was a PDA, whether it was um, a mouse, a keyboard, you'd probably plug that in via a serial port. Serial ports weren't very fast at transmitting data, and so the parallel port was developed for devices which need to transfer a lot of data, such as printers and scanners. The serial port had 15 pins, the parallel port has many more, and because of the many more pins, it can transfer much more data per second. Again, parallel ports nowadays um, are very seldom used. For a while, Keyboards and mice used to have their own special ports to plug into. These were called PS2 ports. They were little round ports and they were often coloured. This one here is a pur coloured purple and is for the keyboard. If you have a look there, you get the little pins and those pins would plug into the socket. Purple for a keyboard and it was green for a mouse. All the ports that I've talked about so far have been replaced by a single port called the USB, the Universal Serial Bus. This is a symbol for it. Whenever you see that symbol, it means it's a USB port. The USB port at the back of a computer looks like that. They're always the same on the back of a computer. And whether it's a USB lead or a USB device such as a USB storage pen, they will always have this rectangular um, connection which is half filled with plastic to make sure you stick it in the right way round. The other end of the USB cable can be quite different. Early USBs, when they plugged into printers or scanners, had this type of connector which was called a USB-B connector. These were generally too big for cameras and other small devices and so was invented the Mini-B connector which you can see is very similar, just a lot smaller. I'm not sure of the reasons, but loads of um, connectors have been developed for the USB to connect devices. Like I said, they're all the same for the computer port. They're all going to be this long rectangular one. But here, this is a Mini A connector, and you can see how different that is from the Mini B. Now here, I've got four different types of USB mini connectors. Can you see how similar they actually are? It'd be very easy for people to accidentally plug one of these cables into one of these sockets or vice versa. People even get confused by these two here or, or those two. Here's a few things to remember. Never force leads or devices. Always make sure the plug is the right way round for the socket. Push in firmly but gently.
be very careful that you use the correct mini USB ports and leads. In this camera, the port similar to the lead, similar but not the same. Those two, similar but not the same. These two, they look similar, closely look, if you think it's the right one, gently try it. And does it push in? Very gently, maybe gently wiggling, and it goes in. Do not be tempted to use a lead you know is wrong. A quick look at some other types of port. The first sort of port has this symbol by it. It's called a Firewire port. This was an alternative USB, a much quicker version of USB. Um, first type is Firewire 400. This is the two ends of your Firewire lead which connect a computer to a hard disk drive. They're both the same. These are the two ends of a Firewire lead which connects a computer to a video camera. The computer end is always this shape and in this case the video camera end is much smaller. It's more convenient. A more modern version of Firewire can transmit data at 800 megabits per second. It has a different shaped port. You can see them side by side here. That port transmits 400 megabits per second. This one, 800 megabits per second. The small end would be the same plugging into your digital camera, but the end that goes in the computer is a different design. Let's consider ports for connecting your monitor to your computer. Older computers used to have this VGA port. It's a little bit like a serial port, except for it has three rows of pins. These are no longer used. On modern computers, you have digital video, and the digital video ports look like that. These ports have three rows of eight pins, where each row carries a different one of the primary colours. First row red, second row green, and the last row blue. And depending on the intensity of each colour, you can make every other colour in existence. If you have a laptop, you may have the mini version of the DVI, or even the micro version of the DVI. Another type of video port you quite often see now is called HDMI high definition media interface. Now, you don't tend to see these on computers but you do see them on other computing devices and you do see them on the back of your television. If you want to connect your Virgin Media Box to your television you'd nowadays see user HDMI or if you're connecting your PlayStation to your television you'll use HDMI. The picture quality would be much much better than using the older methods. This picture shows some sound ports. Notice they're not all the same. This one is designed to plug a microphone in. This one is designed for any other input device. Now this one here, although it looks identical, it's actually for an output device such as a speaker. Down here we've even got one which is specially designed for a subwoofer. Outside they look the same, but inside the connections are different. So it's important that you plug the right lead into the right port. To help you, if this was in colour, these ports would be different colours. The last port I'm mentioning in this video is the network port, uh, properly known as an Ethernet port, technically called an RJ45. In the IT rooms and around other classrooms you may see these sockets. If you push them back, the cover you can see there is an RJ45 or an Ethernet socket. If you take the network lead, that's your network connector. It looks very similar to the connectors on a phone. This has got eight pins and a phone has only got six. To put it in, I push back the cover and gently 
click it in place. If I want to remove it, I can't pull it by the lead. I've got a little plastic stopper. So I've got to lift up the latch and gently pull it out. Okay, that was an overview of the computer ports. You need to be able to recognize the shapes of the ports. Ideally, you know their names. But the most important thing is that you plug the correct cable into the correct port.